What you're seeing in front of you is the personal details of thousands of users stolen from their computers, including account credentials, cookies, Discord credentials, and a lot of other information. For security reasons, I'm going to hide these details, but they are real personal records collected from all over the internet, and anyone can obtain them. These are called Steeler Logs. This was just a small example file containing only a few thousand lines, but there are many more. We're going to talk more about them, but before that, if you're new here, please subscribe to this channel and like this video. Steeler Logs are collections of sensitive data stolen from infected computers or devices by malware known as info stealers or simply stealers. These logs typically include usernames, passwords, browser cookies, autofill data, credit card details, and other information stored in a browser. Stealer malware infiltrates devices and silently extracts valuable information. Unlike ransomware, which might encrypt files or disrupt operations, info stealers operate under the radar. Once they extract the required data, it is compiled into logs that are then exfiltrated to an attacker's command and control server for exploitation, sale on the dark web, or use in further attacks. There are different stealer malwares all around the internet that are still infecting thousands of computers daily. I can't show you those, but I created a simple version of Steeler Malware myself in Python, and we can take a look at it. I'm in Kali Linux, and in my terminal I have a file named Steeler.py, which is basically a vibe-coded Python-based example of an info stealer. It's going to steal some basic info, like our system name, a screenshot, our IP address, saved Wi-Fi passwords, and a few other things, and send them to a Discord webhook. I'm using Discord as a command and control server here. Now when I execute it by providing my Discord webhook, it starts collecting the data. It has a few flaws that can be corrected by making some minor changes in the code, since it is vibe coded. As you can see, it says data sent to Discord. If I check my Discord server, you can see we've received the data. I've redacted a few pieces of information like my public IP because it was invading privacy. I vibe coded another C version of the same thing. If we go to our Linux machine and execute the stealer binary with pseudo permissions, it will take a minute or less to steal all our personal information to the Discord webhook. Let's have a look at the code of this Python file and try to understand it thoroughly. By the way, if you want the code, I can't provide it directly, but if you're subscribed to our System32, I put all of my codes for tools with explanations there. We have different guides along with a private Discord server where we talk only about hacking and cybersecurity. You can check it out via the first link in the description. Anyway, I've opened Steeler.py in my Sublime Text Editor. If we read it, you can see we're importing some Python modules like OS, Time, and a few others. It's not like this malware had only a few functions. It has multiple ones like accessing the webcam, recording audio, and even a keylogger, but those didn't work because I don't have those devices connected to my computer. Here are a few variables for our paths and this webhook variable, which stores the webhook we provide as an argument to the script, although we could store the webhook there directly. Next, we define some functions, like this run function for running system commands via the Python script. Next, we have the get public IP function, which sends a get request to a URL to get our public IP address, and a function to get our local IP, which isn't strictly necessary but could be misused. If we scroll a bit down, we have our function for taking screenshots. We're using Scrot to take system screenshots, but there's a problem with this script. Unlike the C1, we have to install dependencies for this Python 1 to function properly. For example, this script depends on Scrot for taking screenshots, but what if Scrot isn't even installed? Next up, we have the webcam function, but it wasn't working because I don't have a webcam connected to my computer. We also have record audio, but as I said, I didn't have a microphone connected, so it wasn't working. One of the interesting ones is the clipboard function, which steals data copied to the clipboard. There's also the Wi-Fi password function, which steals Wi-Fi passwords. We have one for our bash history, but since I use a different shell, it wasn't working either. Also, we have a Chrome passwords function that tries to steal stored passwords in Chrome, but I only have Firefox installed on my system. We also have one for browser history, and one of the coolest ones is xfil underscore files, which exfiltrates small files from the home directory. We have functions for checking persistence and even for listing running processes. In the main function, we create a list of all the collected information and add it to a single payload. Then we use our send slash webhook function to send the data and embeds to the Discord server. Let's try this one more time and then we'll move on and look at the C version. Now if in my terminal I type sudo python 3 stealerpy back and then specify my webhook, you can see it's working and collecting data. By the way, if you don't know how to create a webhook, you can create a new server. You'll see a general channel there, 
go to its settings, click integrations, and then you can easily create a webhook from there. Once created, copy it and start using it here. As you can see, we've got our data again. If we look at our C code, you can see we're importing some library files as well. And then we have to specify our webhook here, which I've already done. After that, we create functions just like we did in Python, a function for everything. And when done, we can compile this file with the GC C compiler to get an executable file that we can run with pseudo permissions and it'll send all the data to the Discord server again, as you can see. The good thing about this one is that no one can read the content of our stealer unless they are a reverse engineer, but it was still revealing our Discord webhook when I tried to get strings out of it. We need to do some obfuscation. Anyways, these are just examples. I'm not attacking anyone. This was just for educational purposes. Hackers spread malware like this to different computers through ads, phishing, and other tricks, infecting their systems. After collecting a lot of data, they create those stealer logs like I showed you at the start of the video. After they get enough, they either sell it on the dark web or forums, or monetize it in different ways. The log file I showed you at the start of the video was just an example, and it also contains a lot of expired information. Let me show you a few others. This one has around 29,000 different email and password combinations that were stolen from databases. I'll be blurring all the details for privacy reasons. Another one I have has around 67,000 mixed pieces of information that were also stolen from somewhere. I can't tell you where I got these from, but they're all over the internet, and hackers use them to create dummy accounts or impersonations. That's why you're always advised to use strong passwords and to keep changing them after a specific amount of time. So if any info stealer malware gets your data somehow, you can still stay safe. Credentials aren't the only thing stealer logs can have. Most stealer logs also contain information about users, like their real names, ages, and sometimes even credit card details. One of the widely used info stealers, Redline, was sold as malware as a service that harvests saved browser credentials, cookies, autofill and payment data, crypto wallet secrets, and system information from infected Windows machines. It's been heavily abused by cyber criminals and has been the target of law enforcement takedowns. It was sold as malware as a service on underground forums and Telegram with tiered pricing, meaning many different threat actors could buy or rent it. Well, that kind of trade has been disrupted now because many underground forums have been seized by authorities, but this malware is still available and is infecting thousands of computers daily. We can distribute those samples, but if you'd like, I've already put the code for all these example programs in my system 32 with detailed explanations of how everything works under the hood. You can check it out. We also have a community where you can ask any questions about your studies. That's all for this video. If you found it useful, please like this video and subscribe to the channel as I post this type of content regularly. Until we meet next time, happy hacking and peace out.